2000, the West Coast groundfish trawl fishery was declared a disaster. Catches were, were terribly low. Fishermen just couldn't make it go, but there were too many fishermen chasing too few fish. Every fisherman basically had an incentive to go out and catch their full trip limit as efficiently as possible. And that didn't take into account things like trying to avoid uh, juvenile fish, undersized fish. We've turned that completely on its head with a new management system. Fishermen, NGOs like EDF, and managers got together and, and worked on a better way to manage the fishery. And in 2011, they implemented a catch share program. Since that time, we've partnered with a fisherman, Joe Panisi, out of Monterey, to test some new trawl gear. He's now trying to avoid juvenile fish, unmarketable fish, because if he catches them, whether he discards it or not, comes off his quota. We have a lot of reef here in California and when we get strong currents a lot of these small juvenile rockfish that live around the reefs they get swept out into the flats where we're fishing in the mud and sand and when that happens we could set the net and we can go through 40 or 80 tons of small juvenile rockfish without much trouble I mean there's a huge abundance of them you don't want to catch them I mean those are your that's your future this last few years we've been doing a lot of gear modifications on the boat started by taking what we'd have as a traditional trawl and then trying to improve on it by getting the net to hover as opposed to you know digging and tending bottom is what the way we describe it typically. So what we've done is we've taken all the weight off the bottom of the net and got rid of all the chain and so now what we do is we pull the net really tight and it causes the net to barely touch the sea floor, it just hovers. It'll just touch here and there. And because of that, we're seeing about a seven gallons an hour fuel savings. And uh, because of the reduced friction, our trawl doors now are actually opening almost twice as wide. But that's key to what we're doing here is because we need to be able to get the bottom of the net extremely tight in order to get it to hover. The other thing about the trawl, which is unique, is that the, the trawl itself has chambers built into it. So the more we pull on the trawl, the more these meshes open. Now the fish sprinkle out through the entire cotton, all the small ones get out. So we wind up with just really nice, big, beautiful fish. It's been amazing, the difference between our old nets and our new nets and all the changes that we've made. The fact that we're reducing our bycatch down to a, a fraction of a percentage, where before you know, we were upwards of 60% of what we were catching, you know, that's amazing, it's amazing. We're out here today aboard a collaborative fisheries research vessel called the Donna Kathleen, deploying an ROV as part of a larger project to understand the impacts of different bottom trawl gears on the seafloor. And the better we understand those differences, the better we can manage the fishery that uses those types of gears. A fisherman local to Monterey named Joe Panisi just spent the last week using both this modified gear and the traditional trawl net fishing along lines that we provided to him, which we had sampled with the ROV before he went in the water. He's now done the trawling and we're going back out with the ROV to um, quantify different attributes of potential impacts to the seafloor. Down. Thrusters enabled. There's the bottom, there's the sea floor. So we're gonna hit bottom at about 135 meters and then taxi over to the beginning of the transit line. So water temperature's uh, about nine and a half degrees centigrade. Depth is 134 meters. Sea floor looks like when we left it last. Yeah, it does. So right now we're in the trawl plot that was trawled with the modified gear several days ago. 
and there's yet to be any obvious indicators of impact from that trawl in our video imagery. To be careful though, the human eye likes to see patterns or the absence thereof, and so we have to be careful about our first impressions. Uh, we really won't know anything definitively until we've had this video and still photos back in the lab and had a chance to analyze the totality of the data. Early indications are this gear can dramatically reduce fuel consumption used by fishermen. It can save uh, tons of, of juvenile rockfish and flatfish. It can in increase uh, the catching power of, of fishermen, make them more efficient. I really want to make sure that the results here, which look like they're tremendously promising, get translated um, and, and spread, disseminated throughout the fleet. We'd like to make sure that everyone is aware of, of this gear, what it can do, and has the opportunity to, to really learn more about it and take advantage of it. So our vision is, is twofold here. First of all, that, that we can really disseminate the innovations occurring on the West Coast uh, in Alaska and beyond to enhance those economic and biological outcomes, really spread those through. One of the, the challenges we saw was that there was a lot of exciting innovation occurring. I think the, the second thing is, is maybe a little bit more amorphous. I think we're hoping to create networks and connections of folks, of, of researchers, of managers, of fishermen that can uh, exist and continue well beyond this workshop. I don't want to catch this size fish because I don't get any money for it. I want to catch big fish. So I change the size of the web in my cod end. I change the size of my web up front. I take the top off of my net and let the rockfish go if I want other things. And the juveniles, you have to use bigger mesh. You might speed up, slow down, speed up, slow down. There's just a myriad of simple little things a guy can do. This innovation, gear innovation, is just a, a critical part of it. You're seeing gear that, that eliminates small fish, eliminates unwanted fish, eliminates bycatch. And this is that one tow where we estimated we had probably a little over 40 tons going through the net in about an hour and a half. So, you know, there's a fair amount of volume here. And um, when, we, when we hauled back and then we had delivered we had delivered uh, 4,700 something pounds. So, so the net sorted all these fish that quickly in an hour and a half, it sorted you know, 40 tons plus. And the sand dams that we retained were all over 11 inches. I mean, for the most part, I, you know, they were all just really nice fish. This is a very fisherman oriented conference, which is a nice difference. A lot of fishermen, when you talk to them, they're really, they really have to be conservative and not try not change things too fast, but a lot of these, the guys we're talking to here are, are really making a, a lot of effort and taking some risks, trying something different, and, um, and it seems to be paying off. I'm, I'm impressed. I thought it'd be great if we could get together, and here we are. And everybody in the workshop is like, wow, it's so cool that we're all together. And I mean, the ideas bouncing around in all of our heads right now are just wow. I think one of the remarkable advantages that, that has happened through the, this process is that we're now working with the environmental groups. Um, and it's, it's, it's just, like I said, back in the day, nobody ever expected that we would, we would be going down this road because we were at each other's throats. And now, all those relationships we've developed over these last few years have opened up great opportunities for, for both fishermen, I think, and environmental groups.